we were looking at uh, recursion and that is a new style of programming where we can express the a particular function in terms of itself. Like I can uh, express factorial n in terms of factorial itself factorial n minus 1 and fa n into factorial n minus 1. Okay. Another very common example of uh, an easy example of uh, recursion is Fibonacci numbers. We have already told you what the Fibonacci sequence is. The Fibonacci sequence can be uh, expressed as f 0 Fibonacci 0th Fibonacci number is 0. The next one is also 1 and henceforth all other ones are sum of the previous 2. So, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21, so and so forth. Therefore, we should be able to define it in terms of a recursive function because you can see this function f and this function f are the same, only variations are in these parameters, right. I am expressing the same function in terms of these parameters. So, the function definition will be very simple f int n some integer, if n is less than 2 then return n, if n is less than 2, if it is 0 then 0, if it is 1 then it is 1. Otherwise, what would you return? Return f n minus 1 plus f n minus 2 sum of the previous two Fibonacci numbers. Now, this is interesting because again if you see how this will be computed, it will be first expanding what are the things I have to compute and when it meets the stopping condition, then it starts collecting back and come back. So, how many times say if I say if I want to compute Fibonacci of 4, how many times will that function be called? Let us look at the expansion of this. So, how will it happen? Fibonacci of 4 will be I want to compute. Fibonacci of 4 is Fibonacci of 3, Fibonacci of 2, these two should be added. So, I have not yet found out anything, I am just decomposing the problem. Okay. This is a very, very important concept that in order to solve the problem, I want to decompose it into smaller sub problems. For F 4, I have to solve it by solving F 3 and F 2. Okay. Now, for solving F 3, I have to solve F 2 and F 1. I further decomposed it. Now, for solving f2, I have to solve f1 and f0. Fortunately, and for solve now the even now the entire thing has not been broken down. f2 for that I have to solve f1 and f0. Now I have expanded the whole thing. Now I know that f1 is 1, f0 is 1. So, f2 will be 1 plus 1, 2 this is known all these end points of this structure are known 1 as uh, 0 1 1 0 1. So, I go on adding them and ultimately I will get f 4. Now, it is in a way inefficient, but because the same thing is being computed repeatedly, okay. but it has it will make for to an ex to a practiced programmer it will make your programming, uh, writing the program much more, I mean less line, lines of codes if you can express it in much more uh, better way. So, you can see here how many times the function was called 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 times, 9 times the same function was called in order to compute f 4. Okay. So, the code for the Fibonacci sequence will be if now the stopping condition or the base condition is very, very important. 
is very very important. So, if n is 0 or n is 1 then I return 1 this is the base case unless I reach at this point I will not be able to compute the entire solution. Otherwise return Fibonacci of n minus 1 plus Fibonacci of n minus 2 that is the code for the Fibonacci number. Now, I mean this sort of uh, whenever I I will have too many calls in that case I should be should avoid them okay, as much as possible. And uh, so, what is the difference between recursion and iteration? In recursion we have the repetition I uh, sorry in iteration it is both re repetition in iteration there is an explicit loop explicit loop for i equals 0 i less than equal to n minus 1 i plus plus. So, there is an explicit loop whereas, in case of recursion it is a repeated function calls all right. Termination iteration if the loop condition is no longer satisfied while this condition do if that condition fails then we come out of the loop. In the case of recursion the base condition must be recognized whenever we are getting the base condition factorial 1 or factorial 0 Fibonacci of 0 or Fibonacci of 1. So, those are the base conditions both can have if wrongly programmed both can have infinite loop. So, uh, the performance wise um, iteration often gives faster result, but it is a good software engineering practice to gradually get accustomed to recursion as you do more and more programming uh, you will see that you will be able to express the things in a much subtler way. So, whenever there is a performance issue try to avoid recursion um, it will require additional memory also. There is a there is a um, particular type of storage that is required in recursion that is known as stack. Stack is a la last in first out type of structure. So, those things uh, briefly let me tell you how this thing is done because stack is nothing but uh, a structure where we can push in data from one side say I put say 5 first I push. So, 5 comes here then I push 4 then I do n minus 1 3 is pushed then 2 is pushed then n minus 1 again and 1 is pushed. Now, when I take out the data the data will come out as 1 then 2 then 3 then 4 then 5 in the reverse order. Okay. So, the two operations are push and pop okay. popping out from the stack and pushing inside the stack. So, this stack uh, data structure becomes very handy for implementation of functions uh, recursive functions. We will show some examples like here for example, I want to compute the GCD of A B. Now, typically what happens is I call this GCD is computed I return. Okay. Now, here when I call something I call something all the say here was I here I was here my program flow was here I went in. So, and when I went in all the local variables and everything here were stored and I had to remember where I will be turning back. So, all those things are stored in the stack and without a stack data structure it is very difficult to um, implement recursion and for that matter any function call. So, you see here is a function and so all those return address is stored before call this stack was empty. Now, after when it is returning it is taking out from the top of the stack and again I come to know where I was. Okay. So, that is uh, so similarly you see here 
it is a n choose r a b that means n c r ok. Uh, what we compute n choose r if I compute then you know n choose r is uh, factorial r divided by uh, factorial of n minus r or some people write it in this way by factorial of n minus r. So, how would I do that? So, how can I implement it? So, here n c r has been called from here factorial has been called and then where do I return? I return I have to come here ultimately I have to return here. So, I should not lose the path. So, what the stack does is when I um, make the call first call then when I make the call in C R then the local variables here will be stored on the stack and again I make another call from here. So, local variables are there I am calling fact as I go in here the local variables here are st stacked up and then when I return this part uh, this part this part will be taken out and passed on to this. So, what happens is this part is as it returns this part is taken out and I am here. It can again continue and then it returns. When it returns here this part will be taken out this part will be taken out. Okay. this part will be taken out and uh, so that is for normal function call how the stack remembers where I should go back all right. In the case of recursive calls what happens what we have seen is activation record gets pushed into the stack when a function or call is made. In recursion a function calls itself. So, several function calls are going on with none of the calls are getting back. So, all the activation records are collected. So, you need not uh, delve into that uh, too much. Let us see I uh, will show it by an example of computing factorial. So, an activation record is the local variables and the return value what the function should return and where it should return. So, that with that say the main function is calling fact 3 all right fact 10 and here is the fact 10 if n equal to 0 return 1 otherwise n times fact 10 minus 1. So, main calls fact. So, when it calls the value is n equal to 3 there is no return value return address is in main ok I am remembering that. Next again fact is calling itself. So, now fact is calling fact 3 is calling fact 2 and my return address is fact. So, you see it has been stacked up next fact 2 will call fact 1. So, that is what the stack is growing and its return is in fact all right. Now, next time it will be fact 0 now the return value till now there was no return value now the return value is 1 ok and return address is fact. So, as I do that I return then I have got a return value because now I have come to this point. So, 1 into 1 will be 1 and I am returning to fact as I return the stack will contract and what is the return result 2 times 1 that is 2 that is a factorial 2 and return I am returning to fact. So, I return again now I am coming to the last time in the fact with n equal to 3 that started here. So, and the result is 6 now I return to main. So, at every stage look at this I have I know I remember from where I started and from where 
where I am returning back. Nothing is lost using this stack. So, stack is a very interesting uh, data structure that helps us in many ways, especially in implementing things like recursion and uh, all those. So, one assignment that I am leaving to you, do it yourself, press the activation record for the following version of Fibonacci. Please note down the code include stdio.h int f, f is the Fibonacci function, a and b if n is less than 2 return n, if it is 0 then return 0, if it is 1 return 1. Otherwise, a is f n minus 1, b is f n minus 2. I have done it in a different way, f n minus 1 and f n minus 2. So, f n minus 1 has to be solved separately and f n minus 2 should be solved separately, then we will return a plus b all right? and then the main will print. So, just as a fun, you try to draw the activation record of this version of the function. Please note it down, take some time and note it, note down this function and you see on this side I have shown how the activation record will look like. Local variables you can see n, a and b. Return value you have to keep whether it is in Fibonacci or in main, either in main or in x or y. Where is x and what is y? This is x and this sorry, this uh, the, there is a problem in this, I am drawing it again. So, you see this, this is x this is x and this is y all right not these two these are not these are not aligned properly all right so either where do i return and here is the return to the main either i return to main or to x or to y and what is the return value draw the activation record of this and then um, we'll see um, how much you could do it I am sure you will be able to do it and recursion. So, today we have learnt a new style of programming that is recursion and also we discussed in the last class. So, recursion is a type of writing functions where the function calls itself and that makes uh, many functions to be written much more succinctly, much more subtly and that is a very good software engineering practice. Uh, although as a beginner if you find difficulty in that you need not bother too much about it. You have got iteration at your disposal and you can solve most of the problems with iteration. Okay? Practically all the problems you can do. Uh, maybe in some cases it may be a little more difficult to write, but ultimately it will be possible. Okay? So, if you find difficulty with recursion, you can set it aside for the time being, but we have to discuss it because that is a very nice uh, way of writing functions. We will continue with the, the concept of structures in the next lecture. A new thing will be introduced that is called structure. Okay? Thank you.